Good morning. Thank you for uh, coming. Thank you for uh, joining online. Um, it's great to see so many people. And um, my name is Lyndon Johnson. I'm the founder of a business called Think Differently that effectively helps entrepreneurs figure out how to build effective communication strategies. And I'm also the general manager of a company called Comms Bar, which is like a walk-in clinic for public relations and marketing. Uh, it works like a genius bar. You can walk in and get help when you need it. You can book an appointment online and talk to one of the specialists. And we have specialists in a range of uh, domain areas from building relationships to compelling actions to awareness to media to news to presentation skills. So whatever you need, we can help you. Uh, this is the first of a workshop, first of a series of workshops uh, that we'll be doing through the day today as part of something we're calling Back to School for Business, which is designed to help entrepreneurs understand how they can build actionable relationships that have value for marketing, how they can then compel those people to take a commercially valuable action that has benefit for both sides, and also to generate commercially valuable awareness. And they'll be coming up later on through the day at 12.30, 2.30, and 4 o'clock. So if you want to come and join us, 375 University Avenue uh, in downtown Toronto for uh, those, or uh, you can join online. There'll be Facebook Live as well. So my background, I started my career in journalism. I worked uh, for pretty much the first decade of my career in uh, radio and a little bit of TV doing news, uh, news and sport doing the gathering, doing the production, back in the days when it was tape and you edited with a razor blade and uh, some tape. And uh, then I went into communications at the back end of the 90s. I went into a role, effectively a smaller version of Enterprise Toronto, helping support local entrepreneurs, helping them build their businesses in the municipality, but also using those stories in order to attract other businesses into uh, the town. Then went into a series of agency positions, predominantly working with uh, early stage startups and small businesses. Uh, and when I moved to Canada in 2010, I decided that having heard the same question day in, day out from customers, why isn't what we're doing delivering the outcome that we wanted and you told us it would deliver, I would try and fix the problem. And so this is what I've been doing uh, for the last few years. It's what Think Differently the primary goal of it was when it started, and it's evolved a little bit since then. But we've been developing a system, a system that enables anybody now from an entrepreneur with no understanding of public relations and marketing in the traditional sense to a CMO working in a Fortune 50 company uh, that is working in developing strategies every day and also in implementing them tactically. And that's what I'm going to show you uh, over the next 25 minutes or uh, half an hour. So when we started, there were two things that inspired what we were doing. Eric Reese's book, The Lean Startup. If you don't know it, I recommend you read it if you're an entrepreneur, or if you're working in a larger organization. It, it's a book that is effectively about product development, but uses a methodology developed by Steve Blank, um, customer, customer development methodology. And Eric's goal was to develop a system that enabled people to develop products where there was a market need, having seen people develop products in businesses that he'd worked in, that ultimately when they were launched, found that there was no market for it. And he wanted to help uh, product developers, product managers to develop products that there was a market for and to learn what the market wanted, develop it, and, and not spend weeks or months or years developing something at great expense, which then had no value to the business and customers ultimately didn't want. And when I came to Canada, that book was recently published. Around the same time, Alex Osterwalder uh, had published a book called Business Model Generation. And one of the key elements of that was a canvas, a visual tool for gathering information and then being able to make strategic decisions. And when I saw it, 
it seemed like there would be something in that that would support or contribute towards what I was trying to do, which was to figure out why public relations in the way that the industry traditionally delivers it didn't work, why you couldn't measure either progress or impact, and then figure out how to use that knowledge to develop a system that would enable anybody to figure out how to build a strategy based on validated learning and validated evidence, rather than just picking a list of tactics, putting them together, calling it a strategy, implementing it, and then scratching their head when it didn't deliver what was required in terms of business impact. And so that's what I've been doing the last few years. And this behind me is really the major piece of work that has come out of that work. It's a series of canvases using Alex's um, idea about having visual tools that enable you to gather information, assumptions, about all of the key areas of a effective communication strategy. So you'll see in the top left is all uh, about building actionable relationships, and that will be the next session that uh, we'll be running at 12.30. We have the third one along, which is about compelling actions. Marketing, by definition, is about compelling uh, commercially valuable actions. And so we have a canvas that enables uh, entrepreneurs and CMOs to gather information about the things that impact whether or not somebody will take uh, a particular action, a specific action, and test it in order to validate how you get somebody to do it based on uh, the core components and also market context and your specific product or service. In the top right-hand corner, there's a canvas about awareness. Awareness really has no commercial value at its heart unless you put one there. And so you look at generating awareness with a commercial uh, outcome, commercial impact that you're looking to get from it. And that's what we've done with the canvas in the top right about generating commercially valuable awareness. And again, we have a session coming up uh, on that as well later in the day. Along the bottom, what most PR companies focus on, media coverage, earned media as they call it, although these days there's paid, earned, shared, and owned. Peso, peso. It's a model that the industry talks about. That's where they focus. And in reality, it's awareness without any real strategic goal, which they then try and measure in terms of commercial impact and struggle. And I've seen that throughout my career. They was talking about trying to figure out how you actually quantify the value of media coverage, of earned media coverage, 20 years ago. And that conversation is still ongoing. We think we've solved it. We think we can show you how to do it. But you have to define what it looks like. There's a canvas for news. The news cycle these days is 24-7, 365 days a year, and it changes minute by minute, second by second. The average time that a news story spends on a major tech news website now is 15 minutes, and I suspect it's getting shorter. And so how do you capture people's attention? How do you create something that has all of the components of a compelling news story, both for journalists and also for their audience? And so we have a canvas for that as well. And then the final two, the bottom right-hand side, are all about brand. We hear so much about brand these days. Everybody is a brand. Everybody has a brand. But what we've done is take the core components of what a brand is, which is essentially a stated uh, number of values that an organization stands for. And then everything it says and everything it does that supports that, that demonstrates that is what it stands for. Those are the values that are embodied by every single member of the organization. And so we have two canvases, one for the development of the brand to ensure you're developing a brand that actually aligns with the type of customer that you're looking to have as customers or partners or stakeholders or investors. And the second one in the far right-hand corner is about how you communicate it. Because brand can be communicated for a number of purposes. It can be used for building relationships. People can want to have a relationship with you as an entrepreneur or with your business because of what you stand for. 
The body shop is a prime example. Patagonia, another good example. Or brand can be used to compel an action. People will do what you ask them simply because they believe in what you believe in. They stand for what you stand for. And so brand can be used for marketing purposes as well. You can also just do brand awareness. You want people to know what you stand for, and you want to be able to demonstrate that that is what you stand for, and it's a, a part of everything that you do in the business. Disney is a prime example. So you can communicate brand for awareness purposes. You can deliver it in a number of different ways via third-party media. You can do it via content that you own, that you distribute directly or indirectly directly via email or via physical mail or indirectly, perhaps via social media or by uh, a third party influencer. And that could be an influencer that simply has a big following on a social platform or it could be somebody that actually has the trust, has the knowledge of somebody that you're trying to get to take a commercially valuable action. And so the system works together You'll see arrows that connect some of the cells in one cell, in one canvas, to another cell in a separate canvas. And the idea is that the information that you gather in order to enable you to build a strategy in one of the canvases has potential value to another. In some cases, it has value to multiple. In some cases, you need to actually validate the strategy in one of the canvases before doing anything in some of the others, because without that piece of information, it simply won't work. Take, for example, an action. You're looking to get somebody to take a commercially valuable action to buy a product. They won't do it unless you have a relationship with the organization. They won't have any reason to be compelled to take that action unless they understand the value that it delivers. They trust the organization has their interests at heart as well as having its own interests at heart as well from them taking the action. So unless you've built those commercially, unless you've built, I beg your pardon, those actionable relationships, it's incredibly difficult to get them to take a commercially valuable action. And I'll give you an example. I'm within the Staples store. There are people that over the months I've been here, I've got to build relationships with. Some relationships are stronger than others. Now, if I forget my wallet and I need $3 to get home this evening, there are people I could ask that would be willing to lend me the $3 so that I can get home. There will be others that won't. Maybe the relationship is still in its early stages. Maybe they don't believe that I've left my wallet at home. If I wanted $50, there are probably still a few people in the building that would give it to me. If I really needed it, if there was something I needed to buy that because I don't have my wallet, I can't afford it, and it's only available today. There are a few people, based on the strength of our relationship, they trust that I'm telling them the truth and that they know that they're going to get the money back. They'll give me the money. Equally, again, there are some people that won't. And some of those people may be the people that would have given me $3. But if I'm asking for $50,000 for investment in my business, in Think Differently or in Comms Bar, the first thing is they actually have to have the capability to lend it to me. They have to have the money available. But there are very few people that I know that would give me that money. And if they did, they would ask a lot of questions. They would require a lot of information in order to be comfortable doing it. Even though I have a strong, arguably actionable relationship to the other two pieces that I just explained, the $3 and the $50. Equally, if you want to generate awareness, 
you need to have some kind of relationship because otherwise you're talking at strangers, talking to people that don't realize that you're talking to them. And if they don't realize that you're talking to them, it's very hard to get them to take an action because they're not paying attention. You can't make them aware of a product or service if they're simply not aware that you're talking to them. I did this demonstration yesterday, so we'll see what happens today. I mic'd up. People within the space can hear me. People within the store, maybe. So I'm just inviting any entrepreneur, if you can hear what I'm saying, to come in. Come into the spotlight space. I'm not asking you to do anything. I simply just want you to recognize that you're aware that I'm talking to you. And we'll see whether anybody comes in. We'll give it five minutes. But awareness, if people don't know that you're talking to them, generally has no value in a communication strategy for compelling actions or for getting them to make recommendations or to influence other people. You need that relationship first so that they're paying attention when you ask them to do something or when you try to communicate with them. It's the same thing with journalists. The traditional agency model for trying to secure earned media coverage is pitching journalists stories about their customers. When they don't have customers, they don't call them, generally. And I know there are exceptions. But imagine somebody only contacting you when they want something. We all have personal relationships that are like that. It's not an effective way to get what you want. It's certainly not a strategic way to do it. But by validating the assumptions for each one of these areas, it's possible to reduce the risk of failure, increase the chances of getting the desired outcome that you want. We'll go through the canvases as we go through the other sessions, but effectively the top left-hand box that's labeled one is the desired outcome, because you've got to know what it is in order to build a strategy in order to achieve it. Two, three, four, and five are assumptions. They're the critical pieces of the jigsaw for building a strategy that will enable you to achieve that outcome. Without those, your chances of achieving that desired outcome are slim. And the fewer of those you validate, the slimmer the chances get. Six is the hypothesis. It's based on the assumptions. What do you think the best way of getting the outcome that you want is? And once you have a hypothesis, you can test it. And the way that we do that is with cell seven by identifying the riskiest assumption, the one that's likely to cause the failure of the strategy first. Why do we do it that way? Because the traditional approach is to spend a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of activity, a lot of resources, only to figure out after they've been invested whether or not the strategy was the right one, whether you've got the outcome that you want. We believe it should be the other way around. You should find out what's going to cause failure and deal with it at the earliest possible opportunity. Because you can then address it. You can figure out what the information needs to be, what that part of the strategy needs to look like in order to increase your chances of getting the outcome that you want. The second canvas in here it's really important. We put it in here uh, because it's about relationship mapping. It's about understanding people that you have within your network that are actionable. People that can have value for marketing. People that are paying attention so that you can communicate with them as part of a two-way process, not just a broadcast where you're talking at them. You can figure out who the journalists are that you 
really have to have relationships with long term if you want opportunities in their publications. And who are your brand ambassadors? Who are the people that actually share the vision or stand for the same things that you as an entrepreneur or you as a business stand for? And you can map them. And you can use them to help build relationships with key people that you don't have a relationship with already. Or you can use them to find other people that are like them. Because people that stand for something, people that have the same job titles, people that work in the same types of organizations, in the same roles, they know other people that are like them. And if you know how to communicate with them in order to build an actionable relationship or to compel them to take a commercially valuable action, or you want to tell more people about something that you've developed that has value for them, the people you already have in your network are the people that can help you to do that, to find more people like them. So that's a summary of the framework and a very quick overview of the methodology behind it. It's designed for entrepreneurs, but now is being used by companies of all sizes. Some are using it as their internal process. A process that can be used by communications professionals, by marketeers, by relationship builders, but also by sales professionals and also by executive management as part of goal setting. Because as you'll see as we go through the rest of the sessions today, everything really boils down to three things. Relationships, actions, and communication at scale. And by scale, it's really just more than one. But relationships, actions, communication at scale. When you boil it down, a strategy for achieving almost anything in business has those three core components. And we believe this is a way for you to develop all of those, to build actionable relationships that have value for marketing. And when you have actionable relationships, people are willing, prepared, ready to take an action. They're also validated as being the right people, people that have the capability to do what you're asking them to do. And when you know who they are, you can find more people like them. And when you know what works, you can communicate at scale knowing that what you're saying is likely to deliver the outcome that you want, rather than simply communicating at people and not getting what you need in order to grow the business. So that's all I have. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them, and uh, I will do my best. Yeah. Okay, so the question is, where do you start this Eight canvases there. There are actually a couple of others that we're bringing on as well. It's a good question. Thank you. Um, so the, 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 the answer is really, we always start with relationships, because if you don't have the relationships in place, then nothing else really works. And they could be relationships with customers. It could be with employees. It could be with journalists. Uh, it could be uh, with uh, advocates. In some cases, it could be with people that you fundamentally disagree with or they disagree with you. But that's where we start, and that's where comms bar sessions start. Looking at what we know about the relationships that we're going to need, because if we don't have them, it makes everything else a lot more difficult. But in reality, you can start with any of them. Um, you can start with um, the awareness one and build an awareness uh, canvas that then identifies that there are people that you need to actually build a relationship with that you haven't already, and so you need to go back and actually do that piece of work in order for uh, the awareness strategy to work. 
Same with, with uh, marketing. You can actually uh, then uh, figure out what the action is and figure out whether the people that you're intending to ask to take it are the right people. Capability to take an action is a huge problem. Uh, we assume that there's one decision maker largely because consumer marketing is front and, and center on most of the things that we see. We don't really understand what's going on behind the scenes with companies that are marketing to a B2B audience, perhaps because we're not that audience. And so we don't see it as much as we do the consumer stuff. Um, so the answer is you can start anywhere. It's really about figuring out relationships. And if you have those relationships already built, already actionable, then that's great. But if you don't, then you're going to need to go back and start um, that canvas as well before you can probably uh, develop a strategy on any of the others. So hopefully that answers your question. Great, thank you. OK, um, another question. OK, so the question is about measuring relationship strength. Um, how do you know whether a relationship is actionable, um, whether it's strong enough to actually support the action that you're going to ask? And the reality is you have to test it. You can benchmark a relationship strength based on what you think it is, but the only way really to know whether or not that uh, assumption is correct is to test it. You'll see on the community um, canvas that there are some small boxes by the relationship hubs, and they're actually for benchmarking relationship strength and also uh, identifying how strong it needs to be in order for those people, that person, to take the action that you're going to ask them to take. Uh, so you can benchmark it at the start and say, I think it's this strong. The only way really is to test it by asking them to take small actions first, because if they're not going to take a smaller action, micro action, uh, they're unlikely to take a big action that has more uh, investment for them, either financially or uh, as, uh, uh, as a person. They, you know, they need more emotional um, investment to take the action. So uh, it's one of those things that really you can only test um, by doing and actually asking people to take action. So um, there are ways of doing that. And around this, there are tools and resources and ways that you can test it. Um, and report on it as well, and monitor it, and, and report progress, and all those kind of things. That's part of the ecosystem that we've developed, but it's uh, the proof is in the pudding, really. That's really the only way you can know for sure, which is the fundamental basis of this, which is the fundamental basis of Eric's book and Alex's as well. Um, you can set out what you think you know to be true, but the only real way to know is to test it and see. So hopefully that answers that. And it, yeah, and if you've got any questions afterwards, come and see me and we'll, we'll kind of go through. I can show you in a bit more detail. Um, how long have we got? Let's go one more question. OK. Yeah, actually, that's really interesting. So influence. Um, influence is not what most people think. Um, Influence, if you look at the relationship hub, um, you can actually figure out people that are influential and figure out who they're influential with. People buy um, services from professional influencers because they have a large following. The reality is, if those people are not the people that get value from your product or service, it's worthless. And that's Arguably, one of the big problems is that influence isn't general, influence is specific. There are people that, if I'm buying a car, I'm going to ask for their advice. There are people that there's no way I'm going to ask their advice for about buying a car. If I'm looking for you know, a new outfit, again, I've got people that I will go to that are different to the people I'll ask for advice about cars because their area of influence on me is related to fashion, not related to vehicles. And that's the same for everybody. There are people that you go to um, when you want advice on something or you want to test an idea. You know, I'm thinking about buying this car. What do you think? What have you heard? Have you driven it? You know, anybody that has that vehicle or has shopped at that store or anybody that's bought a particular label and, you know, kind of see how it's cut and will it, you know, suit me. All of those things. So influence is 
uh, only measured by the ability to change behavioral perception, those two things. And if they don't have it with the people that you need to change behavioral perception with, then they might be influential to some people, but it's not going to help you, so they have no influence. And again, that's, I think we're going to see more and more of that over the next few years where people are figuring out that influence actually isn't about scale. It's actually, excuse me, it's actually about behavior uh, and, uh, and perception. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. So I'm conscious it's half an hour. Um, hopefully, it's given you an overview of the methodology and the framework. The next session is coming up at 12.30. Um, we'll be looking at building actionable relationships. So that first canvas, um, you know, how do you build a strategy for building strong, mutually beneficial relationships uh, that uh, are ultimately actionable for marketing purposes um, for the third canvas along um, on the top row. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them uh, into the chat if you're online. Um, you can come and see me. Um, I'm going to be around here. If you need specific help, uh, we can kind of fix you up with a strategy session if that's what you need. Um, but I'm here. Uh, contact me you via comms.bar is the website. All of the contact details, the location, everything. Uh, again, this is uh, Staples Spotlight Space. Um, it's part of uh, a transition that Staples is going through uh, from an office supplies company to a working, learning, and growing company. And this is uh, the flagship store in downtown Toronto. Uh, Spotlight Space is uh, part of Studio, which is a shared workspace. And uh, if you're interested, you can find information on the Staples website. Uh, or you can come down to the store, and somebody will be happy to give you uh, a tour around. So thank you. <laughs>